hopefully this is helpful. Actually, I am pretty confident that this is helpful because this is information I wish I had when I first started teaching because I had no idea how to do this. I had to figure this out through trial and error, but instead, here's my gift to you guys uh, to save you some stress. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to teach main idea and supporting details. This video is for the teacher who may be new and may have zero idea how to teach something like this. I've taught main idea supporting details this way for the past three years and I actually did a couple observations on um, this same lesson that I'm showing you and this can be used for grades truly I would say third grade and up. I've done this in third grade and fifth grade and it's very, very easy. And once you get the hang of it, your students will be able to do this all by themselves and that is the goal. If you're new here, my name is Bree, and if you like this content, be sure to hit subscribe. I put out new content every single week, teaching lifestyle and education. I also have a podcast linked down below if you're into self-development and if you like podcasts. Also, I have an email list linked down below as well if you would like me to send you any information throughout the week of new product releases, new tips and tricks. And finally, there is a book club that I am launching October 1st. If you are interested in being part of a virtual book club where we focus on a one self-development book a month and you have a community to help support you, then my book club will be perfect for you. There's a sign up link down below and it is going to be launching October 1st. And lastly, be sure to follow me on Instagram where I chat with you guys more in real time over there. I share on stories and that is the best way to message me if you would like to reach out. All right, let's get into the video. Going along with this video, I have created a TPT product that goes hand in hand with how I am teaching main idea and supporting details. And if you are familiar with my writing videos, I'll link them down below. This is how we read through the source pages, this exact same way. But before you teach students how to read through source pages and pull out main idea supporting details for writing, it's really important that they get familiar with what main idea and supporting details are. Also, I will have this product linked down below and this product is good for any single writing source that you wanna read with your students. I like to use this with reading informational texts, but also you can use this for reading narrative texts. And it's a really good way for students to understand what the main idea is of the text and how to pull details that support the main idea and what that means. And like I mentioned before, before you start writing, especially if you're familiar with my writing packs, before you even start getting into narrative writing, informational writing or opinion writing, students absolutely need to know how to do this on their own. During state testing, they're gonna be needing to do this to do writing, um, the writing prompts that are on SBAC, as well as different types of comprehension questions. This is, I believe, the very base level of what students should be learning, and I would teach this definitely in the first month of school. I would teach this in conjunction with race. Restate, answer, cite, and explain. I have a digital product for that as well. I will be making a paper product for that later on, but this was my summer project. Okay, let's get into how to teach this and what comes with the pack. All you have to do is purchase, print, done. And the product also comes with lesson plans as well. I would use the product with this video and the lesson plans to help support you and your students. Okay, so on the very first day of teaching supporting details and main idea, I would absolutely introduce this anchor chart. Um, so in the pack, these are all printable pages. You just cut them out, print them on different colored pieces of paper, print them out, glue them on. This donut comes in color or black and white. But the whole point of this anchor chart is because it matches identically to a circle map. So this is what a traditional circle map looks like, right? It looks identical to the circle map on the anchor chart, which is why I created it. So the goal is for students to get to this point 
this point, this is what the finished product is going to look like at the end of the students working. The goal is for the students to get to this point with the cut and paste and coloring and all the fun to being able to do it 100% on their own on a traditional circle map. That is the goal. And like I've said before, if you are teaching writing, this is so important, especially because this is exactly how you are supposed to be finding sources and writing the details down for those sources in my writing packs if you have purchased those before. Um, and again, I'll link those videos down below. Those are very helpful in my opinion. So day one. I would introduce the anchor chart. And as you can see, the main idea goes in the middle of the donut and the sprinkles of the donut are the main or the details of the main idea. This is what it's gonna look like at the end. As you can see, the main idea is in the middle and the details are on the outside of the donut for the sprinkles. So main idea supporting details, there's the definition of the two. The main idea is what the text is mostly about and supporting details are sentences that describe or explain the main idea. Um, also on the very bottom are sentence stems and the sentence stems are so important, especially if you are doing a lot of communicating or collaborative discussion in your classroom. After reading through an informational text and pulling details from it, I would actually think it's a really good idea to have students use these sentence stem and collaborative discussion. I just think it's a really good idea to have students verbally communicate the main idea and supporting text or the main idea of the text is using their completed circle map to help support their answer because that's why they're making this. They're making the graphic organizer to help them support their answers through collaboration or the product also comes with the questions printed and I like to go through these questions as well teaching students how to use the donut circle map to answer these questions. Now at the end of day one after we've talked about main idea supporting details I would play a Kahoot, I would play a Quizzies, I would have students just play games in distinguishing the difference between main idea and supporting details. I'm telling you, Kahoot has amazing options to do this. Same with quizzes, they're really fun and the students get to practice using this anchor chart and that's what I would do for the first day. For the second day, this is when we start to read through the informational text and start to fill out our little donut graphic organizer. So the product comes with three different informational texts. I provided two short informational texts in the product. The first one is germ hotspots and the second one is defending against germs. These are short texts and they're absolutely perfect for practice. I would practice with these two texts first before even having students um, do this on their own for a writing because more times than not, even with my fifth graders, this was new to them but they really did really, really well after the first example. The second example was even better. Just practice is key. And also comes with a larger text, and the larger text is Germs 101, just talking about germs in general. And it's actually these two paragraphs combined, but it's more of a different main idea because the title of the text is gonna be the main idea. Also, there is a larger bundle if you're interested in more informational text to have or to use with your classroom. That'll be linked down below as well, and you can actually bundle this product together for a cheaper price if you're interested, especially if you teach older grades those writing sources go along with my writing wall as well so it's all like a nice neat little package you would hand out on day two this donut cut and paste graphic organizer it literally says the donut it has the directions up above and you would hand out the sprinkles and the main idea and supporting details questions and what you do for the very first day of this is I strongly recommend to use a smaller text. I believe the first one we did was uh, defending against germs. So I'm gonna use this for an example. And what you should do is have students get their circle map. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit more. So I'm gonna be using this as an example of what I would have on my board actually. And on the board, especially introducing the smaller text, we would discuss how to find the main idea of this text. And you're gonna be using text features and explaining that because one of the questions on the sentence stem 
is what is the main idea of the text and what I did in my fifth grade classroom was I said okay well what do you guys think the title or what do you guys think the main idea of the text is and I had students say it's the title well how do we know this is the title and why do you think it's the main idea and just keep asking why 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 and once you guys have established that defending against germs is the main idea of the text you're going to direct students to write that in the middle of their donut circle map page defending against germs that is the main idea so what you are going to do now is you are going to model 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 I would say model the first two sentences and then start to pull students because this is pretty simple and the students get it pretty quick in my experience so for I'm getting a little too far ahead of myself before you can even read through the text you need to number, number the paragraphs. This is so important. Please make sure you are um, informing students how to number the paragraphs because this is so important when they are citing information and writing with information, answering questions with the information. It is so important. So what I do, especially when I have a larger text than this, but what I do is I say, okay, you guys, I want you guys to put your finger on the first indent and really talk about indentation. A lot of students do not know what indents are in my experience or what an indent means or what it is, especially my third graders. So make sure to go slow on this and have students put their finger where the indention is. Then I want you to say, all right, I want you guys to tell me what are the first three words in paragraph one and they will all say it out loud. Or you can pull an individual stick and say, John, what are the first three words of paragraph one? Thankfully, we can. Perfect. Number that paragraph. Let's pretend this paragraph, was, this was paragraph two. I might say, Emily, what are the first three words in paragraph two? C-U-R. And then circling and num numbering the paragraph. Um, and I would also have this displayed on the whiteboard. So I would have this on my whiteboard, and then I would have this displayed as well. And then I would have this anchor chart hung up next to that, just to refer to. Okay, after you have numbered the paragraphs, what you need to do is you need to have your students put your fin put their finger on the first word of paragraph one. I walk around during this time and I make sure my students' eyes are down and their finger is on the first word of the first sentence of the first paragraph. Once the students' fingers are on the first page, and then I also say they could put their pencil there or their finger, whatever. <laughs> um, I like to give students choice. Once their finger is on the first word of the first paragraph, their eyes are down, I am reading the whole thing clean all the way through. I'm doing a clean read. That's just to give the main idea of the text. It's to understand what is this text about um, and to make sure that yes, this is our main idea of the text. So I would read the whole thing out loud and I would do direct students. I would even have this posted on the wall or on the board. If there are any unknown words to you, circle them. Circle any unknown words. So as I read, the students are following along with their fingers. And of course, you guys are teachers, and I know that you know this, but um, I think it's really important to have proper prosody while reading. So, um, you know, I read through this with my expression and my prosody. Students are circling any unknown words. Once I finish reading the text, I then ask students, okay, were there any unknown words? They raise their hand, they tell me, and we work together finding the meaning of the unknown words. And we use that using context clues. We use context clues to figure out the meaning of any unknown words. And that in itself, you guys, could just be a lesson for day two. I am not a fan of like cramming too much information into kids' minds a day. I really like to take it slow, cool, calm, collective, and have fun. I really dislike teaching when I feel rushed. So the more you can chunk and chew, the better it is for you and your students. On day three, you're actually gonna be starting to work on your donut circle map. So now what students are going to do and you're going to model this for the first two sentences. You're going to read the first sentence, sentence by sentence. So for example, the first sentence says, thankfully, we can defend ourselves by killing germs. Okay, so after I read that, I then think, and this is modeling, I'm modeling out loud, this is my main idea. 
So I need to find details that support the main idea. It says, thankfully, we can defend ourselves against germs. Okay. Defending against germs. We can defend ourselves against germs. Do you think I should write that down? Um, and then I, I talk out loud. No, I really shouldn't because it's not really explaining how we can defend our, ourselves against germs. It's just, that's more just a statement that we already have written here for the main idea. I don't need to rewrite that again. Or you may want your students to write that again. This is very um, subjective and that's why it takes a lot of practice. It's not concrete and a lot of things aren't just concrete and objective like that. So going on to the next sentence. The first line of defense against germs is to have a strong immune system. So I'm modeling again and I'm saying, okay, the first line of defense against germs is to have a strong immune system. Okay. I'm going to think, is that helping me explain how to defend myself against germs? Is that helping me explain how to defend myself against germs? Yes, it is. I can defend myself against germs by having a strong immune system. Now, this is important. When you teach students how to write it on your donut or on the sprinkle, so they're going to write it on this sprinkle. And what I'm going to do for this example is I'm just going to bullet point it because we want our students to do this. We want our students to move away from the donut and go more to the I'm just going to make my own circle map kind of thing. Okay, now this is an extremely, extremely important step. This is one of the most important things that we have to teach our students because it helps them with writing, helps them with answering questions, and that is to cite where they found the information from. So we found that information in paragraph one. This smaller text only has one paragraph because it's a practice text, but once you but if you purchase my other writing pack that has, I believe, 13 different um, multi-paragraph writing source pages in there, you're going to need to make sure that the students are um, citing where they found the information to help them answer the questions, to help them reference the passages and source pages as well. So I always have students say, paragraph one. Have a strong immune system, paragraph one. They need to make sure that they have the source here because they're going to, like I've said, 20 times. So you, as a class, um, for the first two sentences, I'm modeling how to do this. And then it's pretty much up to you guys as teachers. What I like to do is I like to have students do partner work with this. If you're able to, hopefully you are. Um, that means the students are working together. I'll say, okay, read paragraph three of the text and highlight anything that you think is important to add to the circle map. What is, an, what is a detail that supports the main idea? They work in partners. What I also like to do before that is I like to have, I like to read the sentence. I like to give maybe five seconds of think time, maybe more depending on your grade in your class. And then I pull sticks and I say, Jonathan, did you find a detail that supports our main idea? And he says, yes. And I'm like, perfect. Then I pull another stick and I said, what is it missing? I'm missing something. Or am I missing anything? And then someone raises their hand or I pull a stick and they say, you didn't cite. Perfect. I need a cite. And it's really important when you're teaching students how to do this, asking why do we need to do this? Why do we need to cite? How does this support the main idea? How, why? all of those questions for them to elaborate and explain the reasoning. So that is day three and day three, the students are reading through the small text, practicing finding details, explaining why, all of that, what I just said, and they are writing the details into the sprinkles. Um, then what I have them do, and this is like a really good extra time activity, and um, the students absolutely love this when we did this in class. I had students cut out their sprinkles, um, design their donut, and glue the sprinkles on top. So here's the main idea that we did, germ hotspots. Um, here's all the details we found together with the citations, and they glued the sprinkles onto the donut. Here's another one we did. This is both with the smaller text pages as practice. I think this was our first one. Yeah, defending against germs. So then that would be it for day three. I really wouldn't push it over that at all. Um, so you kind of have an option here. 
For day four, you can go into the questions and have stu students answer these questions using your graphic organizers, or you can do another small text as well. Do the other smaller text as well, and then they'll have two circle donut maps and to answer the questions individually. But what I did is I just kept it defending against germs with questions and then germ hotspots with questions. So when students, I also have a larger um, page as well if you would like a larger copy of the questions. But this takes time. The questions may take day four to day five. They may take two days. They almost took two days with me. They pretty much did. And I think mostly it was because I was hybrid and I didn't have a, uh, that much time. But it is a lot of practice for students to restate, answer, cite, and explain these questions. At least in my class, I always have students restate, answer, cite, explain for every single comprehension question because it's such good practice. Um, and again, practicing together and then maybe for the third circle map we do, or the third source page and circle map, um, I'll have them do a donut all by themselves. This could totally be a test. You can do a sm another smaller text if you'd like, or you can do a larger text in my writing pack. I'll link it down below. There's a lot of different um, topics you guys can do. What I think I would do for a test would be, I would hand them out a source page and I would say, all right, Paragraph one, I want you guys to find the main, or I want you guys to find details for the main idea, make sure you cite, and then I would grade them on that to see if they can do it by themselves. I would do one paragraph at a time for that. And then gauging how well they can do that, that means that you can move on to writing now and pulling, um, reading through multiple paragraphs of text pages and then pulling details out. But this is definitely the first step before even doing any of that. And the goal is when you guys get to the writing, when you guys are writing narratives, informational opinion writing, expository, whatever you're working on, the goal is to have students do this type of circle map. Um, this is one that we did for the power of gratitude or the benefits of gratitude. What is, oh, this is with my um, gratitude pack. I'll link that down below as well. But this in itself is a little bit different and I will explain it really quick right now. So let's pretend you have a different writing source page that you want to use and this is after you got done with this. I would still have this up in the room, especially if you're working on something like this. But let's pretend it's maybe the second month of school and we're like, okay, let's move on. Let's have, let's start our writing. And if you're familiar with my writing, then you know exactly what I'm talking about this. But let's pretend you purchased one of my source pages and it's a different topic of source pages, but um, I have a source page about um, sugar, like sugar and food. So let's pretend you guys are going to be writing a narrative about XYZ and one of the source pages is sugar and food. So what you would do is you would do the same exact process. You would number your paragraphs, look for unknown words. You would have students work together finding the main idea or the details for the main idea. You would do exactly the same thing, but for an assessment, what you would do is, let's pretend this is three paragraphs. What you would do is on the third paragraph, you would have students work on the third paragraph completely on their own, and they would circle their own detail in red, and they would turn it in. Or you can walk around in clipboard crews to where you walk around, you just see what they wrote and mark them right then and there on your clipboard for assessment as well. Okay. Okay, you guys, that is it. That is how you teach or how I teach supporting main idea and supporting details. I did this in person. My students loved it. And I really think this is one of like my best inventions I've ever came up with uh, because the students loved it. They loved coloring their donuts. Um, they absolutely loved it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you're interested in any of my other how-to videos, I will link them down below. I have a whole playlist on how to teach RACE digitally, how to teach third grade writing, how to teach fourth and fifth grade writing. I think that's it for right now, but I'll be adding more to that playlist. All right, you guys, thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys in my next video.